God's spirit. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Are you ready to receive? To receive, to receive, to receive. Just put your trust in your receive, receive, receive. Are you ready for God's spirit? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Are you ready to receive? To receive, to receive, to receive. Just put your trust in God. Receive, receive, receive. Just see. Oh, see, then you shall find. Knock, 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 knock. And the door shall be open. Just ask. Ask and it shall be given. And the love comes trickling down. And the love comes trickling down. to God this morning, to Christ our Redeemer, and to the Spirit of the Lord in this place. Church of God and saints of Christ, all hail. All hail. Is it well with thee? It is well. It is well. It is well. Certainly, I, I give honor to our senior bishop, the chief executive, Bishop C.L. Hendricks man of God for this hour, and to Bishop Henson, to the at-large, and to all the evangelists, to the elders, to the sister evangelists, sister elders, and deacons, and all the Church of God and Saints of Christ assembled here. It is good to be here on this beautiful day. Amen. Amen. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to Amen. have assembled here this morning to be able to worship the name of the Lord. Amen. We've heard such wonderful sermons and we've had such a wonderful time. We've been getting messages from all over, all over God's creation of how a beautiful time we have been having. And so mm -hmm. I'm delighted to even be a part of this great celebration yes. and to be a part of this Joshua generation group Amen. that Amen. we are walking and not only walking, but possessing yes. the promise of God Amen. that he promised he would give Joshua when they went into Come on, the promised Jesus. land. I'm grateful to God to just be a part of a church mm -hmm. that I always knew and always wanted to be a part of. This is the church. <laughs> this is the movement. Amen. This is the way church should be. Amen. And I'm glad to be a part of a movement. Come on, Chief. I'm Amen. glad to have a leader. That Thank says you. we are a church where people matter. Amen. 
That needs to be in everyone's testimony. That needs to be in everyone's conversation. This is a church where people matter, where everyone's concerns are important, where everybody's voice is heard. And so I thank the Lord for just being a part of this and being a part of the ministry. I'm not going to be too long. I just want to jump into the word, but I do want to say I'm I'm excited to be with everybody on this Passover. You know, we do not know and we cannot tell. We may never see each other's face again. I Uh certainly want to give kudos so true, to my tabernacle, so to First St. Myrtle, Mother Myrtle. Yes. I'm so happy to see her this morning, along with all the saints of the New Haven Tabernacle. We've Amen. been certainly carrying on and tearing on, and it's just been a blessing yeah. to be a part of this service. Happy Amen. to see everybody on the line this morning. My text this morning comes from Genesis, the 37th chapter. If you know anything about Chief Wade, you know that this is probably one of my most favorite stories in the Bible. And so we want to look today at Genesis 37, beginning at verse 20, beginning at verse 19. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh, Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him. And we will see what will become of his dreams. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a very familiar story. Amen. It's a very familiar passage. It is the beginning, if you will or a part of the beginning, depending on where you choose to start. But for me, it is the beginning of our Passover story. Mm -hmm. It is um, such a deep and powerful text and chapter. I have to just take my time to dive into it. And we were diving into it leading up to Passover in the tabernacle in New Haven. Mm -hmm. I want to just deal with a piece of this passage today. Uh, I'd like to use the subject that when they had Uh, taken Joseph. Uh The Bible said that they stripped him of his coat and they threw him in a pit for a subject matter. And this is part of the journey. When they threw Joseph in the pit, my subject for this morning is, and this is part of the the journey. And this is part of the journey. They they say that the happiest people, uh, the happiest people are those that believe in the beauty and the power of their dreams. Mm -hmm. When we were young, we dreamed of many things. And as a result of our dreams, uh, it usually led to us skipping and jumping and and running around and feeling wonderful because we had our dreams in mind. Uh, Dreams inspired us to pursue. It It inspired us to reach for our goals. It inspired us to reach for others and pull them along the journey. And even if absolutely nothing went right in my day or today or even yesterday, there's one thing I still have. I still have my dreams for tomorrow. Uh No, there's no there's no such thing. There's no such thing of of great people. There's no such thing of special people. We are all just ordinary people. Nobody's exempt from issues. Nobody's exempt from pain. Nobody's exempt from having to be committed to their dreams. Uh Everybody struggles. Everybody goes through trials and tribulations. But what sets us apart, what sets the average person apart from the world is that we're committed to our dream. You and I both started out excited uh, about our educational pursuits, but then the demands of life happened. We all were excited about raising children and having a family, and then life set in. We all had blissful hopes of of marriage and and how that would be such a wonderful thing until you found out that you always don't agree with one another. Yeah, Yeah, Lord, have mercy. Dreams, I'm talking about our dreams today. Dreams that promote, uh, that promotion at work that you wanted, you found out that somebody less qualified got it over you. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about how we spent our money going to Passover, money that we didn't have, haven't been on vacation two or three years, and someone says, you're crazy. I want to tell you, no, you're not crazy. No, you're not over spiritual. Uh You're just committed to the life that God has laid before you. Commitment will bring us to the dream that God has for our lives. No matter the twist. Amen, amen. 
No matter the ups and the downs, God needs us to stay committed even through the rough pastures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Genesis 37, 23 said, and, and, and they came, they came, it came to pass when Joseph was come to his brethren. You know the story. Yeah. Joseph's father had given him a coat of many colors because he was a son of his old age. His father said, take this food down to your brothers. They're out feeding the cattle. He went out to the cattle to feed, to give his brothers food. And they said, here comes the dreamer because they hated him uh -huh. because of his dream. Uh -huh. They hated oh Joseph because his dream said that you were going to bow down to me one day. Uh -huh. His dream even said that his parents would bow down to him one day. So when he came to give the food to his brothers, his brother said, let's conspire together and let's kill the dreamer. Here comes the dreamer. So it said, and when it came to pass, when Joseph had come to his brethren, they stripped him of the coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Saints, as much as we try to stay committed, the enemy has a way of rerouting us from our dreams. Right. Yeah, the enemy is out to get you. The enemy is out to discourage you. The enemy is out to derail you this morning. The enemy is out to tear you down and to block you and to stop you from reaching your dreams. And not only you, but but he's after your spouse. I, I want to tell somebody today, keep praying for your family, church, because the enemy is after your children. Some of our children are miles and miles and miles away, but the, the enemy is at the only hope we have is our prayer life hallelujah yeah. the only hope we have is that we trust in god no matter where we are Amen. keep praying for your family the, 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 the enemy is after your children's education the enemy yeah. is after your husband's health the enemy is after you ah, and after yeah. your church and after your saints pastors we've got to stay committed to the Amen. things that we've been taught your grandchildren Coming up in this generation the enemy wants them the enemy oh, wants no, them sorry. the enemy is enticing them and uh, they can bring down your peace. The enemy can Seriously. bring down your happiness. The enemy will try to strip you. The enemy will try to strip you of the coat that God has put on you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why does he want to do this? Because if he can steal your focus, yeah. he can mess up your dream. Yeah. Preach. Hallelujah. If the enemy can steal your focus, he can, he can tear down the dream that God has placed in you. And if he changes the course, he will change your history. Mm -hmm. And let me yeah. tell you that the enemy, the only thing he really wants to do is to prove God wrong. <laughs> let me say that again. The only thing God, the enemy wants to do is prove God wrong. God gave us a dream. We got to stay committed to the dream. But the enemy's job is to deter us from the dream. Mm -hmm. Look at what he does. He, he starts out by confusing you about the dream. Right. Then he comes and he tries to distract you in the dream. Well, and then he tries to divert you from the dream. My God. God, let me say that one more time. I'm almost I'm not. He wants to confuse us about what the dream is wow. while we're living the dream. Bishop, while we're possessing the dream, he wants to distract us oh while we're in the dream. And then after that, he wants to divert us away from the dream. Look, yeah. look at how easily he does that. Uh, you're walking around. Mm -hmm. And, and you're talking to yourself and you're saying in your church family, you're saying, it just seemed like we can't get along. Mm. Wow. Lord have mercy. That's the confusion that he causes. You're always too busy for church and too busy for your commitment to God. Mm -hmm. That's the distraction. That's the distraction. Yeah, yeah. You're putting things in your life to distract you Thanks. from the dream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then, then, then you're complaining. You're complaining. You're fussing. People are fussing. People are arguing. You're saying this mess is getting on my nerve. That's the diversion. Instead of being focused on what God has given us, we're distracted with what people are giving us. Right. Wow. That's wow. the distraction that the wow. enemy wants. Listen, listen. He wow. is setting up the pits for our lives. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage someone today to let you know that God, his will was not for Joseph and his will is not for you to be in the pit today. Uh -huh. hey, that was God. the enemy's hey, man. pit. But so this... <laughs> is part of the journey yeah this is yeah. part of my journey genesis 37 and 24 now it said and they took him and cast him into the pit and the pit was empty and there was no water there lord have mercy i i i think it very important for us to look at there have been scholars that have have written and have done some study to say how long was joseph really in the pit 
But I want to tell you that that really doesn't matter today, Bishop. It doesn't matter how long he was in the pit because uh, the, the point is that he was in the pit. Right. But exactly. what the biblical writer we must understand here today is that he, he made mention that there was no water there because he was there long enough to need water. Right. Hallelujah. Exactly. He was there long enough in the pit to feel like everything is lost. He was there long enough to realize there was nothing to sustain him in the pit. There was nothing holding him in the pit. There was nothing, no hope, no salvation being in the pit. So the writer says there was no water. Yes, sir. He's simplifying that there was nothing to sustain Joseph. My God. He was left to die. Amen, amen. Have mercy. Do you ever feel like that sometime? Amen. In the pit? Amen. You lost your job and you're crying out to God, God, what am I doing in this pit? Lord, have mercy. Trying to budget your bills and you're saying, Lord, how did I get in this pit? Lord, have mercy. Oh my God, trying to budget these bills. You don't understand what's going on. Your children, your children are, are running around doing everything under the sun. Mm. Almost giving you nervous breakdown. You cry out to God, God, how do I get out of this pit? Jeez. My children are running around. My children are doing well. My children are trying to find themselves. And in the process, they don't know that they're ruining themselves. But God, how do I get my children out of this pit? Amen. I've got more problems than I can handle. And you just ask God simply. How did I get in this pit? Ow. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Because in the pit, there is nothing to sustain you. Wow. In the pit, that, that there's a dry and a thirsty place. And, mm -hmm. and you see the pit experience as being desolate, right. isolated, and abandoned. But I want to tell you something, that your pit experience actually is an occurrence that happens in different stages of our life to teach us different things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I break it all the way down to very basic? Please you do. cannot yeah. teach a four-year-old long division. He has to start with multiplication. He has to start with addition and subtraction. Yeah. At different stages of his life, he'll learn multiplication and division. Then he'll learn algebra and he'll he'll go to statistics and geometry. Yeah. But those come in stages. Yeah. 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 And so where you are, where I are, where I am, it may, may be someplace different, but guess this. Mm -hmm. Amen is part of the journey <laughs> oh my god have oh, yeah. mercy we yeah. think we think we can reach this certain stage of life that's the problem with us we think that we reach a certain stage in life yeah. and we've obtained and we have attained oh, a level yeah. of life and think that everything's okay i heard vicky small say more money more problems yeah. Yeah. stop letting your money be your god stop letting your position stop saying that my title is is bigger than it it doesn't mean nothing because your title and your money and everything then you have can end up in the pit because the pit is part of the journey. Yes, sir. My God. Amen. It's part of the journey. Yes, My God. Right. Uh, be careful because in the pit mm -hmm. is where we become most vulnerable. My God. In the pit. I, I don't even know if they have divorce laws in California because people have attained such a high level of a, a, a fluency and, 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 and stardom that they just do what they want to do because their, 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 uh, 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 financial status and their, their status in life has caused them to think that they're untouchable oh, no. and they've become vulnerable to what the world is saying is okay. They've become vulnerable to what the world says we should do and how we should go against God. Right. The Bible said they put no difference between the holy and the unholy <laughs> my god so we, we got to be careful it's through the experiences of the pit that god is teaching us valuable lessons listen it, it's not the will of god for you to be in the pit i hope somebody's writing that down this was the will of the enemy but god is so awesome and so magnificent that he will take your lowest place turn it around for your blessing place god will take the pit and make it your school god will take the pit and make it a university so that when you come out of this journey you will end up right where god had destined for you to be because god has dreams for your life because god has a dream for your future Mm -hmm. The pit becomes a place where we learn to trust God the more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When nothing else could help, yep. we learn to trust God. 
Yes. When no one else had the answer, we learned to trust God. Amen. Yeah. When, no, when no one else knew what we were going through, when no one else knew our struggles in the nighttime, when our pillow was soaked with our tears, when no one else understood, when, when no one knew why you were feeling, why you were losing weight. Uh -huh. It's when we learned to trust God. And yes, this mm. is part of the journey. Yes. Yes. God yes. have mercy. Amen. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah. Despite the pit. I want you to trust God. Trust, trust God. There, there's somebody that said, you know, after this Passover and through this Passover experience, I, I'm gaining more faith. Mm. The Bible never taught us anywhere. And if you can find it, you let me know. But there's nowhere I've been able to find in the Bible where God asked us to have more faith. He just said, have faith. So many of us are trying to be over spiritual and over spiritualizing. Just have faith. Amen. That God can work it out. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, he can. Hallelujah. Let's have it. I just want to point out a few things before I take my seat. I just want to know, I just want to help someone understand today that if we remember that God has a dream that we have to live out. Mm -hmm. And along the journey, there may be some pits in your life. Right. Things that I learned from the text that I want to share with the church on today. The first thing I want to share is that we need to accept that the pit is a pathway to the dream. Oh, yeah. Except that the pit it's is a path. pathway to the dream. Amen. You didn't put yourself in the pits. Amen. Somebody say amen right there. You, amen. you did amen. not uh, <laughs> even want the enemy to do it. So that allowed the enemy to tell you that you failed. And that's the reason why you're in the pits. Mm -hmm. No, that's not why you're in the pit. Someone else did this to you. But it's all good because what they meant for evil, God is using for your good. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. God's GPS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God's GPS is saying that this is the best way. Yeah. It may not be the shortest way. Mm -hmm. It may not be the smoothest way, but this is the best way to go oh, yeah. to get to where I have you to go. The GPS of God is saying this is the right way to go. And there's a lesson in the pit that's gonna help all of us along the way. I left my, I, I, if I if left to my own accord church, I'll be honest with you this morning, mm. I would not take God's way. Mm -hmm. Wow, amen. Wow. Yeah, amen. If amen. left to my own accord, I would not go to the pits. Mm. I would not go through the struggle. I would not go through the hardship because it's not easy. It's not, it's not, it's very painful to have to endure some of the lessons that God is trying to teach us, but yet it is. The best way. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It is the best way. It's left our own accord. You, you need to admit too that you would not take this way. Right. Joseph, he says to them, listen, if you're going to, uh, 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 if these guys, my brothers are going to bow down to me, mm -hmm. then why am I in the pit? It doesn't look like what I dreamed. It doesn't look like what you told me, God, but he's saying embrace. The thing I'm learning is to embrace the pit, to embrace what God is trying to do through the pit. And accept that this is part of the passage. Some of us have been to places, even the brother Watts that was on the line, I wish you could hear me today, that even your incarceration is part of God's journey to where he would have you. Some of us have gone through broken marriages. Some of us have been sick in our body. Some of our mothers and our fathers are in the hospital right now. This is part of the journey. If the lesson is not learned now, then when will it be learned? If the lesson is not gained now, sickness in your own body, foreclosures on the home, if it's not learned now, church, Amen. when will the lesson be learned? Wow. Accept that this is part of the journey. Yes. Stop cursing your past. Stop cursing the pit you came out of and bless the Lord for the pit. Yes. Thank because Amen. the pit is where God has begun his scholastic studies for our behalf. The second thing I want to tell you this morning, uh -huh. the second thing I want to tell you is do not conform to pit standards. Ooh. Hallelujah. Right. I wish the right. Hayes would say something to me right now. Do not conform to pit standards. Right. Chief, pit <laughs> results come from pit mentality. Uh -huh. Pit mentality. God, wow. Pit results come from a pit mentality. Yeah. Oh my God! Conform to the standards of things around them to excuse their behavior. Preach. Say that again. As soon as we clear the air, some people they use the pit as an excuse for the con to conform to 
the reason why they act the way they act. Yeah. Wow. Well, sad. you you know this is how I was. You, I just talk like this. I don't mean that. Now that's pit standards. Oh, yeah. That's a oh, pit sure. mentality. <clears throat> I, I don't have to say I'm sorry if I didn't. Mean, that's a pit mentality. Oh, yeah. He did something to me for pit mentality. Wow. Get rid of your pit mentality. Come on, Chief. Get rid of your pit standards. Hallelujah. My mother lived here when we grew up here. So that's why I'm still living here. That's a pit mentality. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. wow. You can do better. You can have better. You can be better. You don't have to live under a pit standard. No, some people walking around doing things that are, are totally against what the health commissions and the health department are saying. Pit mentality. Don't you blame it on faith. Don't you blame it on my commitment to the church. You be wise in your wisdom. Use good wisdom and knowledge to take us forward, but that's a pit mentality. We want to blame God for our sickness. We want to blame God for our pits. We want to blame God for our dysfunction. And God had nothing to do with it. That's right. But God took what we did and messed it. Somebody said, listen, well, what happened in the garden? Did God mean for Adam and Eve? Well, let's just say Adam, because he was the one giving the command. Did God give Adam and mean for him to touch the tree? No, he didn't. But he, he made a way out of no way. When God said, if you touch it, you will surely die. He had to hold to his promise, but he said he'll make a way. Out of no way. <laughs> when you. Joseph's dad gave him that coat, it wasn't the right thing to do, but God still made a way. Yes. Out of no way. When they threw his brother in the pit, it wasn't the right mm. thing to do, but God still made a way. Yes. Amen. Out of no way. It wasn't faith that threw him in a pit. It wasn't <laughs> faith that took him to Potiphar's house, but God was making a way out of no way. Yes. Stop using and conforming to pit standards and having a pit mentality. Wow. Ooh. People try to wow. encourage you. People try to tell you they love you. And all you can do is be so high and pollute. they only to praise to God. Just say thank you. Just thank say you. thank you. Thank you. People love you. And God has sent people to love you. But you, you're so worried about, <laughs> Lord have mercy. You're so worried about being so spiritually high that you're no earthly good. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I ain't getting no amen, but it's all right. Amen. <laughs> Oh my goodness. God always Amen. Amen, Chief. Amen, Chief. God always makes Amen. Take church. When we find ourselves in pits that we put ourselves in, God will still make a way of escape. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. God makes a way of escape. Yes, he does. He's making his way of escape because he has a future and a hope. He says, I know the dream Amen. I, have, I have for you. A dream of good and yes. not evil. A dream to bring you to an expected end. God said, I have a dream for your life. I have a dream for your Amen. Bishop, I've got a dream for your leadership. Thank you. Yes. Amen. It has nothing to do with what the enemy is saying or trying to divert or trying Preach to confuse or trying to distract you from. I have a dream. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you, Chief. Glory Glory to God. God. Thank you, Chief. Hallelujah. But everything Preach, you're Chief. going through is part Chief. of the journey. Amen. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, Bishop Stallings told you already, this will be part of your journey. Amen. Yes. Well. Amen. Amen. Chief. Talk is strong, Chief. You're preaching. I'm a witness. People will walk yes, away. Sir. From My God. Yeah. Come on, Chief. Oh, because of a pit mentality. Yes. Amen. People will hate on you for no reason. Yeah. yeah no, no reason. No love because of a pit mentality. Pit mentality. Oh, mentality. Oh, yeah. God. Thank God. Thank you. Woo. Chief. Let me Thank tell you what you. Bishop Stalin said. <laughs> Come on. If we keep talking about Bishop Stallings, we're going to be in trouble. I guess I'm in trouble. I'm going to keep talking about it. Bishop Stallings said, you could be standing mm -hmm. on the corner, handing out $50 bills, and somebody have something negative to say. Of course mm. they would. Mm. Mentality. Right. Pit mentality. Yes. Pit mentality. Don't conform to the standards of the pit, church. Mm -hmm. Yes. My Lord. Don't conform to the standards of the pit. Uh -huh. Don't do it. Stop feeding into gossip. Yeah. Get off the chat lines. Get off the Facebook and stop. Woo. Woo. Thank stop you. Thank your you. brothers and sisters down for no reason. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Pit mentality. Pit, Woo. Mentality. Pit mentality. 
Lord have mercy. Third thing I want to talk to us today about, before I, before I go there, I want to talk about conforming. I, so one more thing I want to say for our young people. Yeah. The music you're listening to. Uh -huh. mm, ah. I know you ain't going to stop listening to because I said so, but I'm just going, I just want to give you some information along this journey. Uh -huh. Yes. It ain't doing nothing but tearing down your mentality. Yes. Mentality, yes. yes. TV shows were when, they, when When they're talking, I said it before I keep saying, it, I'm gonna say it again. When they keep talking about 16 and pregnant, that is a pit mentality. Yes. 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 I'm not talking about if you got pregnant. I'm not, I'm not tearing nobody down, but if you ain't ready to take care of another life, it's not the right mentality. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Drinking and drunkenness and getting high. You know, I heard somebody say that uh, a weed was wrong but now it's okay. What? But let's stay there for a second. Look how many people have been arrested on life sentences. Yes. yes. And you're oh, out over weed. Now it's legal. See? Wow. Pit mentality. Pit mentality. Right? Yes. You've conformed wow. to the world. That's You've conformed great. to what the slave owners wanted you to do. Woo, yes. I'm going too far now. I'm getting way off track because I can go. I can go a long time on this now. They have Keep set going. up. A they have set up a pit for us. Amen. Yes. Amen. Science. Amen. Pit mentality. Amen. I'm going to say to the black man because anybody who falls in a the pit, they're satisfied with it. Ooh. The world is satisfied. If you beat your wife, oh, the God. world is satisfied with that. Yes. Lord they're not saying nothing about it. Come on, talk to me, Saint June. Yes. If you're having yes. uh, emotional abuse mm. verbal abuse yes. yes the world's okay with that yes lord have mercy we got to change our mentality I, yes I'm, I'm going too far change your mentality yes pit standards pit standards mm -hmm. joseph could not conform to what they were doing to him in the pit and although he was struggling to get out god was teaching him a lesson See that? Last thing I want to say as I get out of the way, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that even in the pit, keep looking up. Keep mm -hmm. looking up. I like that. I like that. All right. I heard, I heard my yeah. sister, St. Rita from Washington, say that even in this pit that we're in of uh, no, uh, quarantine. <laughs> yes. She was able to buy a home. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. Keep looking up, church. St. Adrian, I heard Amen. you say, Franklin, that in this corona time, you were able to purchase a new home. Keep Amen. looking up. Yes. Thank Amen. you, God. And Shaniqua and her husband were able to buy a home. Yes. Shaniqua from Cleveland, St. Shaniqua and her husband are going to buy a home. Keep looking up, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the God. time that we need to put most confidence in God. Amen. This is the time that we need to keep looking up and not be distracted by what the enemy's trying to do. Most people miss God's dream because they're not looking up at God. Yes. They're watching what everybody mm. else is doing. And I talked yes. to you about this the other night. The Bible said that he that considereth the wind, he will not sow. So, right. Mm -hmm. If you consider the virus and the pandemic that we're in, nobody's putting mm -hmm. money down on a house right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's yes. part of Amen. Amen. The St. Adrian, St. Shanique was part of the journey. Yes. Right now. Uh -huh. Nobody's crazy enough to be going out buying cars right now. It's part of the journey. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Keep looking up, church. If we're trying not to imitate someone else, keep looking at God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Look at man will become a carbon copy of what the world is doing. Amen. What the world is doing. We're in the world, but we're not part of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to be more concerned about what God is doing and not about the American dream. God has a dream, but there's an American dream as well. Yes. I'm sure there's a South African dream as well. I'm sure there's yes. a Jamaican dream as well. I'm sure there's a Canadian dream as well. But we got to be more concerned with what God's dream God. is. Yes. yes. Amen. Hallelujah. The American dream used to be pretty affordable. Uh -huh. The American dream used to be a, a woman who could stay home and a husband who could go out and you could make a f happy family on one income, but not anymore because the American dream is always changing. But God's dream never changes. Never changes. Thank he you, God. That, I would, that you have life and that you have it more abundantly. More abundantly. More abundantly. And there is a process to getting that life more Thank abundantly. You. Hallelujah. Yes. I choose God's life Amen. over materialism. I choose God's life. Over yes. the scriptures of the world. I choose yes. ministry and God's word over everything else that's going on in my life. Let us not be stripped of what God has placed in us. Let us not slow down and hold back from what God is saying to run this race with patience and look particularly at what God is saying in the pit. Uh -huh. 
Amen. To be strong. Amen. To be steadfast. Amen. Unmovable. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes. For as much as you know, yes. this too is part of the journey. God bless you is my prayer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise